I'm emotional, okay? It's a cat, okay? Stop. Hi, hello, welcome. Let's do another. My friends recommend me books to read. This time we're doing it with a little twist. We're having family members recommend me books. I have The Traveling Cat Chronicles. This is by a Japanese author, I believe, and it is translated. My sister-in-law lent this to me three years ago, I think. I think it was three years ago a long time ago and she said that I would probably like this. I'm super nervous because it's literary fiction I believe and it's supposed to be really emotional and kind of sad and I really hate books that are sad and emotional and not just positive and uplifting. I like to cry when a book is something that makes me feel seen or it's just super happy and cute that it makes me cry but I've heard that this book is going to make me cry because it is sad and introspective and really shows humanity. So I don't know how this is gonna go. I'm really nervous. Let's see how this goes. <sighs> Hello, so it's actually Sunday, November 27th, which is unusual. I don't usually vlog these days, but I just wanted to quickly wrap up my reading before I move on to something else so that I don't forget any of my Thought. Last night and all of yesterday and the day before, I spent reading this book, The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa. I finished this last night before bed and this was not for me. This is this is not my kind of book um, and I went into it knowing that. I don't like highly emotional books. I don't like books that are trying to make you sad or trying to make you cry. I like uplifting books generally with more plot and generally with more depth of character. This is about a cat, but really it's not. It's from the cat's perspective and it's about this man and basically there's just a ton of flashbacks that are kind of confusing and randomly in the middle of conversations that are of this man's life. And this man has to give up his cat and you don't know why and this whole book is from the cat's perspective mostly trying to figure out why the man is getting rid of him. Things I liked about it. The cat was funny there were some funny moments where I was like, yeah, definitely. Cats think like that. And then there were some moments where I felt like cats don't think like that. So there's that. I felt very introspective reading this book. It made me feel like I was looking into someone's life through like a crystal globe and it made me look back on my life, which I think is a positive. It's good to be introspective and acknowledge your feelings. And it gave me sentimental feelings, which I think is a, is a good, Thing overall and I found the cat's chapters to be enjoyable. <laughs> the first half of the book I was not a fan of and the second half I actually think was the stronger point of this book. I think it was very emotional and I think that's what the author was obviously trying to do and that's that's basically everything I liked about it. Things I was not a fan of. It was very predictable I knew from someone telling me that the book was sad and that the guy had to get rid of his cat why he had to get rid of his cat. It's very painfully obvious so I think that takes away from it. The writing is very cold and distant and tell not show which may be a problem of it being translated. I don't know what this is like in Japanese obviously. I don't speak or read in Japanese. I tend to not like translated books very much. They tend to just not hit for me statistically because maybe when they get translated they lose some of their emotion or something. I don't know. I didn't realize this was translated until I had started reading it and I felt like why is this familiar? Why is this feeling of not being my thing coming back and it reminded me of other translated fiction and then I looked and Boom! Translated by so-and-so was on the Goodreads. Another thing I wasn't a fan of was the internalized transphobia that a cat had, which I feel like is really stupid. I don't think cats think about their gender identity and I don't think cats think about their names in a way that would be like, Ugh, that's a girl's name. It's in the first chapter and I'm not a fan. I'm just gonna say it right here. Uh, Japanese media tends to have this problem with me where they're not very progressive. They are very conservative in their views and not very open-minded. Because of that, I think that showed. The author definitely came through in their opinions through this cat's thoughts. And I just don't think that's 
accurate to how a cat would be. They're animals, they would think I'm male and that's it. Like they're the one that impregnates the other cat. I don't think they would think I'm a boy, I'm a strong man. <laughs> It's a cat. It's a cat. Okay, stop. There were a lot of other moments like that too where I was like I don't know that a cat would have opinions on that. I don't know that a cat would know what Donald Duck is. I don't know if that was like there were just Flintstones were mentioned. I think they were localizing it in the translation and it felt really not good to me at least. There's all of that with the cat. I found the human chapters to be incredibly boring, like so boring. <laughs> and that's not to invalidate the stories of the people being told, I just reading it with my eyes, it was very cold, it was very short, and it was very distant. And so I had a hard time visualizing it, I had a hard time connecting, and I had a hard time caring, ultimately. It just felt really low stakes in a way that wasn't cozy, it just kind of felt boring. So yeah, I sped read through some of those sections because I did not care. And I just ultimately felt like this book was way too long. Felt like we didn't need to take as long as we did to get to the reason that he was getting rid of his cat. Again, because it was also obvious, I just felt like everything was pointless. Once we get to the second half though, I felt like that was the strongest point of the book was showing once the cat knew what was happening and how the cat was coping with that and how the owner was coping with that and how family members were coping with the situation at hand. I thought that was kind of interesting. Again, I switched to the audiobook around halfway because reading it was just painful for me. I was not into it and I tend to be more forgiving when listening to a book on audiobook, especially if the narrator did a good job. I listened to the audiobook for the second half and I have to say the audiobook is the way to go with this book. I don't know if it's the translated fiction but it reads out loud a lot better than it does reading on page. There's that. I also think this would be a good movie. I don't think book was the medium for this. It's just not interesting enough to keep me hooked personally. I do think it would be a very emotional movie with really good directing and really good visuals because just the statements about what was happening in this book didn't feel emotional enough, but I could picture that a movie with good music and really important messages and directing would nail this and it would be very emotional. I'd probably sob. I did not cry. Let's get to that. I am a sobber. I cry about everything. Like I'm emotional. Okay. <laughs> I cry during reading all the time. I tend to not cry during movies. I tend to cry when I'm reading, but I think this would be the opposite. I did not cry. I did not get teary and I really didn't feel super emotional reading the end of this book, even though some people said that I would. <laughs> I just didn't feel anything and I think that's okay. It's just not for me the way it was written. Do acknowledge that it was very emotional and I can see how people cried reading this. For me, it just didn't do it and that's perfectly reasonable. I still think this is a good book. Into the recommendation part, I would recommend this in the fall winter time when you're spending a lot of time with your family. If you need a good cry and you're looking for emotional release, this is really good. I feel like if you're lacking time for introspection, this could help you get in that mindset if you're feeling a little bit chaotic and you need grounding. I think this is a great way to do that. The writing isn't anything special, so I think it's accessible. I do not think it was flowery or anything. It was kind of funny and lighthearted and low stakes. If you're looking for something like that, I do recommend this. If you love cats, this was very much a, if you love cats, you will love this book because there's a lot of cat lover moments in here. I think people who have cats would really appreciate. I did look over at my cat and be like, yeah, that's totally you. If you hate cats, don't read this because this is just for cat lovers. It only is really talking about cats. It's just about this guy's love of cats. I gave this 2.5, three stars out of five. I thought it was fine. So thank you to my sister-in-law for recommending this to me. I never would have picked it up otherwise. And now I'm glad that I can use this and recommend it to people. And if I need an emotional read with a cat, I know where to go. One day I feel 